Well, this is a pretty typical Aussie backyard. You can't call it a garden because there's no plants. Well, I can fix that, make it look a lot nicer, hide the fence and even the next door neighbour's shed. Now, what I've got in mind is a raised garden bed. I reckon raised garden beds are a great idea for a couple of reasons. You can guarantee that your plants have got good drainage. You can guarantee that they've got plenty of nutrients because you're bringing in new soil that's light and fluffy and full of all the good stuff. Now I'm going to use a wall that's called VersaWall. It's got a beautiful texture and a charcoal colour, so it adds a couple of dynamics to the garden. Straight away it gives you height and that extra colour. The plants will thrive, hide the fence pretty much straight away and give it a bit of water and a bit of patience, hide the shed in a year or two. How can we completely transform this area from this to this? Now the first thing we've got to do is work out where the garden bed's going to go and put a string line out and mark it out. Now I'm aiming for my garden bed to be a metre wide. I'm putting a lily pilly hedge in that I want to allow 600 mil for it. Then in front of it I'm putting some lyrio, I'm allowing 200 and then I'm allowing 200 for the block, giving me my metre. So coming off the fence, finding a metre, the outside of my stake is the metre. Double check it. Tie it off, and I'm going to take all the grass out. And the reason I'm taking the grass out is because it can grow through the soil into your garden bed. And across the front, I need to dig a footing. Now it sits on a hundred mil of road base compacted, but I'm going to have to go about three hundred mil wide, just so it's nice and firm and strong. And if you've got some mates that aren't doing anything on a Saturday afternoon, this is a great time to invite them around for a beer. Now villa board's a great, cheap and easy way to keep the garden bed off the fence. You don't want the soil in contact with the palings, it'll end up rotting. And it'll wash through all these gaps into your neighbours and you'll lose a friend. But by putting this up, you can retain the garden bed. Now you can't do this if you had a sloping block and you're retaining everything. But we're just retaining a garden bed like this. The pressure and the weight is going down, not to the sides, so this isn't going to knock over your fence. I'll just tack it off with a couple of nails, work my way along, and when we backfill, you won't even see it. Now the Versa wall is dead easy to put up. You start with a good foundation. I'm using Rebase, the recycled row base. I only need 100 mil deep for what I'm putting up, three courses, and I've gone the 400 wide so I can fit my whacker in. I get this as level as I can but I don't go over the top screening it. I just want to make sure the sand and cement that I'm putting down is nice and even. If it's even, it's strong. You can hire a whacker for about 60 bucks for half a day, and it's important that you go over it a couple of times. If it's really dry, dampen it down. And if it's too wet and it's sticking to your plate compactor, well, you can throw down a little bit of sand over the top, and that's just like greasing a tin. Now the sand cement mixer you want to screed over the top of your road base is pretty simple. I just do six and one. Six sand, one cement. And when you mix it up, you do it dry. Now this sand here is washed river sand. You can use that, you can use paving sand, you can use any sand you've got lying around. The best thing about these walls is you don't have to mud up between each joint. They lock into each other because of all these lugs here. And the corners are super strong. Now, when you're ordering your wall, one thing to take into consideration are the corners. There are right and left corners. If you see the back of this one, it's completely different to just a normal block. What that is, is a little groove for the next block to lock into. So this is a right, meaning we're turning right and going down there. At the other end, we'll use a left, and on the next course, we'll use a left, so we get that bond happening. They just butt into each other, we slide one into there, and then we'll set up the string line. 
The next course will be the exact opposite. Once you set your corner up, you set your string line back up. And a good tip to stop it moving around, because when you're laying the blocks, you'll bang it constantly, is grab a piece of paper. I just use something I've torn off a cement bag, and that keeps it in place. And it's important when you lay your blocks that there is an air gap, albeit even and as small as you can make it, between your block and your string line. If your block starts touching your string line, you won't get a true reading, and your wall will start to creep out, up or down. Now for extra strength, you backfill each course with a free draining aggregate. This is just a blue metal, but it works just as well if it's billed as rubble, as long as it's fine. Now, for the second corner, there is one tip and one trick. If you put the left hand block on top of that right hand block, it looks good, but look at this, it wobbles. And the reason why, is because the standard block that runs through here has these eight lugs. The first two hit the base of your corners. So what you need to do is grab a scutchie or a hammer, child play, knock those two off, and your left sits on top of your right. No problem. Grab the front of that jack. Right. Now you've got to fill the second course. Fill that up for us again, mate. And put a little bit behind it. It kind of brings the footing up and around the side of the wall and encases it. Now being a freestanding garden bed, we're not worried about drainage here. But if it was a wall that was retaining a great big property and you had seepage coming in behind it, you would backfill with blue metal like that and an ag line. Now to stop the soil going through the wall, I'm going to add some geofabric. The geofabric will let water go through, but not the soil and silt, keeping your garden bed where you want it to be. Now we've managed to build the whole wall and only had one cut, which is cutting a block in half so we can start off and finish with stretcher bond. But when it comes to the capping, we need to get miters in the corner, so it looks like a professional's done it. But if you have a look at the blocks, they're longer than they are wide. So if you went from corner to corner, you'd get a cut that was touching at the, at the outside and big wide gaps at the back. Well, the easiest way to do it is without a tape measure and without a ruler. You just find the corner of the two blocks and line it up. What you see here is the excess and the excess. Where they dissect each other and cross here, if we make a mark there and a mark in the corner and cut that off and then do the opposite on the bottom paver, what we're left with is a perfectly married 45 degree joint that makes you look like you got the pros in. Brick saws and chainsaws are probably the two scariest tools I use. If you've never played with one before, see if you've got a mate or a mate who's a tradesman who can come around and keep an eye on you while you're learning this skill. The problems that go with it, if you don't put your block in or your brick or your paver in dead square when you're cutting and you get a bit skew if, it can fly anywhere. So it's definitely not a spectator sport and you definitely need to have your personal protective gear. Eyes, hands and your ears are a dead minimum. All right, what I do is I light it up dry. Yep, that looks good. I'm just taking away that black mark. Turn it on. Add the water. You 
see I've got the larger piece and the smaller piece. These are the keepers. For the capping, I set the corner first, just on some liquid nails. It's good if you've given the cuts time to dry because it'll bond quicker for you. But start with the corner. Look at that. I should go into the block building business. Remember I started by saying, if you start level, you're finished level. Well, look at that there. She's nice and level. What a difference a weekend makes. This backyard is now a garden, and it's got all the structure it needs to hide the fence in the shed in no time at all. And the best thing about it, if you're entertaining, you've got seating along here for about 20 people. And it's rock solid. It's not going to go anywhere. And the plants are high enough that the kids can play all the sport they like. And the balls and the bats aren't going to go flying into the garden bed. These lily pillies with a bit of water, they can be five metres tall in a couple of years. For more information on all my DIY projects, simply go to adbrymasonry.com.au. You can get all the fact sheets and download them from there. Plus, all the hints and tips you'll need to do the job. While you're there, check out our Inspirations Gallery. There's a ton of photos sure to inspire you to get out in the garden and do a job this weekend. Good luck. Well, I reckon I've changed the backyard. It's time for me to relax.